Okay, everybody, this is another episode of Double Dunn's Garage. Um, this is the ignition issue. Um, I'm pretty sure it's ignition. <laughs> Meaning that when I get on the gas, it seems like it is cutting out not the entire engine, though. Just uh maybe crossing up a couple of plug wires or shutting off a couple of plugs um, seeming like it's not getting a higher RPM. it's extremely precise that's why I think it is ignition issue um, I have already tried to diagnose it by simply place it changing out the coil which could be you know definitely could be an issue sometimes but that would shut the entire engine off it's I changed coil it helped. So the coil was doing something wrong, um, but it didn't fix the problem. What you're going to do is going to change out the cap and the rotor. Um, this is an HEI ignition system. So first of all, we're going to pull our air cleaner. Gonna set down the seat. Ooh, that's bright. And then I'm gonna run through it real quick with you. We're going to pull the cap. It is four. Uh, or going under a diesel. Um, it is four, like Phillips head screws or flat head. You could use either one, and kind of see one right here and what it does is you turn it and it pulls the allen head out i showed you in a nerve video how it's done um you get those four out you pull your plug wires sorry and then you pull three wires so there is one wire um that has two side clips you can see my finger on here here and then there's one on the other side there <laughs> not easy to get to I'm gonna get up on the thing <laughs> yeah it's it's a little on the ridiculous side to get to these distributors on the GM so on the other side and they're like a thing you typically just pull your pull with your finger outward even your fingernail if you have any got a tiny bit and it slides out and I'll show you what I'm talking about so it's like this that's one of them and it has these little things on the side that kind of move in and out like that and then there are two others so I'm going to pull one plug wire here um, just making sure that it's kind of set up it's supposed to be set properly um, number one is going to the front um, right by the, so this is number one, which makes 100% sure of that. Yeah, okay, so yes, that's number one right there, right beside the ignition. So, one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. Two, six, five, seven, two, okay. So I'm going to pull number one just to show you. These are a nice high-end tailored plug wire. Okay, if you look here, I have two wires coming off of here. One is the tack wire. Get out of the way. <laughs> <coughs> really? really? Sorry. And then another one is my ignition. So this is the only wire that runs the entire ignition um, to start the vehicle. That The other wiring system is comes off the distributor right there. So I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get set up to pull the cap. So just a second. Okay. So next up, we're just gonna pull all these plug wires since we know that they're in order, and the engine is except for typically the distributor sets over here. So I wonder if that's why some of this is tight. I might correct that. I might pull the distributor up and correct it because usually it's number one is set up here. And people are like, oh yeah, 
you can set some number one anywhere you want. Yes, of course you can. But usually tailored wires are set for a reason. They all go in a certain place. Also the vacuum module then has to be set in a certain place. Everything, they designed it that way for a, for a reason. So, so. Try to get him, keep him out of the way. Why we're doing this? And get these guys out of the way too. All right. Now I use a flat head kind of short for two of the screws and again so one right here one right there and then there's one over there one over there and if I can get my hand out of the way I'll show you how Zerk should put it in push it down and turn sorry I got the light right there but you see how it came out like that so we're gonna do that for the other three I'm not gonna film it because it's kind of a bitch so just a second okay I got them all pulled off so let's pull this over to cap kind of give it a little bit of a move and now I can show you a little bit closer what we're talking about here All right, so we have these right here, and we can even use this Phillips head. You push down, and you turn. A flat head works really good for this, for the Phillips, and if you see why, um, it is because these are kind of very flat. It's a cross, but they're kind of flat, and a big flat head works well. And then, you push, them da you push them down, and they have a spring inside there, and then they turn. Right now they're locked, but if you should push them down far enough, they have a spring. So, let's get to the next step, just a second. Okay, I decided to move into the garage. Um, just because it's a little slightly cooler, and also better lighting. It's very important. So, what comes in a cap and rotor replacement kit is... Typically, a um, the th it's a spring that goes in the bottom of here, and when I hold that up, it's kind of you know it's a thing that kind of uh, makes the spark go from A to B, from you know from each one of the cylinders, and your coil typically sits directly on top of this. So this little grommet comes in the kit too. Sorry. And then the coil sits up here. And then it has a few wires that go from here to here to here. Stuff like that. Um, there's also... Oh. Oh. Uh, ground. Um, I don't know if this always comes in all the kits, but it came in mind. And the ground initially sets right here in the middle. Uh, I'm not having an easy time with this. Okay, I think I got it. I think. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Um. Hmm. Okay, there it is. 
just kind of had to play with it. And it and the coil grounds on one of these, so there's four screws that go in the coil, and then this kind of goes in the middle and and grounds the coil out. So next step is to take your your um, cover, take the two screws out at the top, or actually they're they're a screw, but they're nut they're nut and bolt. So. And that usually has, I don't know what size this is, quarter inch, upside down, quarter inch. Things on there a little bit tighter. Okay. All right, now that should loosen up the top. And as you can see, there are only two there. Sometimes there's three, depending on, I think, the year. Some of the older ones have uh, three. This one only has two. It's just a plastic cover. And it's a cover, obviously, to cover up all this. Um, kind of holds these down. Um, keeps the rain and the wetness out of this. So there's, a, there's an obvious reason for it. Um, next. There are four screws. One, two, three. Four. There's a ground up above here too. So and these are kind of long. Oh, well, they're not too long. Um, depending on the system, I was thinking of the Excel coil that used to be on here. Made them kind of long because that was a cap and a coil in one combo, and it's higher higher um, voltage. But unfortunately, it was broken. It is hot in here. I'm sweating. Probably should be on the sun to actually probably get a little bit of wind. <laughs> Literally, I have sweat in my eyes. Okay. So, now that we got the four screws out, you can see that it's loose. You gotta get a pair of pliers. Oh man, I am dripping sweat. Here we go, this will work. Boy, oh boy. Very warm in here. And now we have to pull these out of here. So I'm going to set this up in the vise real quick. Just a second. Okay, so for we got to take these three, or these two out right here. And they're metal that come off of wires. So I kind of just have to work them a little bit. There you go. I think it was grabbing on a plastic by accident. He's got a, as you can see what I did there, see how it's, that's not like that. <laughs> you got to be a little more gentle than that. That was, that pulled a little hard. And they only go in one way. You can see by there's right angles. So it's, it's like that, set up like that. So they only go in one way, then they go to the coil. So then you just slide the coil up. And then you don't have to pull this out, but I'm hoping there's something wrong here with this cap and this rotor. I'm hoping. When me and my brother inspected it real quick just a second ago, it honestly doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with it besides it running a little 
off to one side because she could be advanced. But a hairline fracture is a hairline fracture. You know, if there's something going on here, I have to do a process of elimination. I don't have to take that. Okay. Okay. I really don't see anything bad between them, between it, but there could easily be a hairline crack here somewhere. Um, it's happened before. It can happen again. You know. But good cap, bad cap, or brand new cap. This doesn't look bad. Um, that's what I mean in the corners right here by it. Uh, sorry. By kind of sparking off to the side there. Maybe a little advanced. I don't know. Doesn't look bad. So let's go out and get the get the um, rotor off. Well, since I wasn't able to film in there, I was going to show you here. Um, also, another thing I figured out is that my um, mine actually wasn't Phillips had screws. They're nut drivers on my old rotor. So you take it and you just unscrew them right there. Towards the July fireworks, apparently. Is it two weeks before the 4th of July? Must be. I thought it was earlier than two weeks before the 4th of July. Anyway. Um, Okay, and then you just pull it up. Oh, really? <laughs> I thought I got it like all the way up. Definitely not easy to do in the camera. Right, filling. <laughs> Definitely not easy to do on camera. Okay. I thought that was all the way up. Should be up now. Okay, and then it just comes up like that. This one right here, I already put mine on, but it's just exactly the same thing. Um, as you notice, Factor One has nut drivers, which you would have just used this. Hold it again, just when I'm out like that. Um, if you've never seen inside of a distributor before with cap and rotor off, you got your weights. Um, mine, I noticed on my <laughs> distributor, are super loose. Um, this weight specifically on the distributor is super loose. I remind me of that one, I don't know. And then you have this is your electronic ignition, tells it how quickly. And when to spark and how fast to spark. Um, this brand spring distributor, so everything's perfect in this. Um, this should be the same. This part and this part should be the same for a straight six. I mean, uh, for yeah, straight six and a, a V8 distributor. So it it fit, and it had the straight six cap. The only difference, or maybe it's a V6. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to, let's see here what to do next. Let's go ahead and get this in device, and I'll show you in a second. Okay, I'm going to set a couple of the, the dowels in device so we could do this as we go. Um, first thing to putting in here, we already saw me put the ground in. Usually you don't have to replace but that unless your kit comes with it, it might as well. Second, you got to put in the little thing that gets the spark from the coil down to your plug wires. So I showed you an earlier that goes in the middle right there, and then it takes the, takes that and goes to the spark through the rest of the thing. Um, actually, it probably goes off of here. I'm sorry. It goes off of it goes from the coil down to the middle of this, and then it 
it uses this and just goes around a circle and then it, then it hits us my bad I know what I'm talking about <laughs> I'm sweaty really sweaty I'm a little irritated All right next this is just like a little pad to hold the hold it down in place so this is one I just I just used the other day came out of this distributor okay then you use, then you put your coil back in so your coil um, has a ground wire there those two other wires make sure they're up top and the wires are facing out towards the towards the thing to match this and it just kind of sets in there and then you put these in, set them in like that and set that one in and you kind of see how they go, they only go one way one more time, they only go one way and then it kind of sets all together like that okay and then put our four screws that were in to and it, it back in Okay, and a second. Sorry, had to find a screwdriver. Um, I wouldn't get them all get them all down again. Tighten or uh, snug it. Get everything threaded before you tighten any. As a good rule of thumb, learned it from a YouTuber called Elderly Yarn. Kinda of have to be careful if you're gonna do it in this, not to break shit. Not to break the cap. Again, we're doing the all for the purpose of experimenting, trying to figure out where my ignition issue is. Because I'm kind of out of kind of out of uh, thoughts and suggestions for myself. I know I could put on a dwell on a dwell meter or one of those dwell machines maybe figure it out but I don't have a dwell machine make sure these wires are nice and kind of tucked in you don't want them going outside the red area there and make sure they're down level things look nice then you put your cap here on okay and then we put the screws back in. And that'll be about it. That I can probably blindly fill. Or some rumble of 454. Okay, that is it for that. Um, putting the putting the cap back on would be just a reverse or taking it back off. Just want to show you a little bit more about this stuff. But that's about it. We'll we'll put it back together 
We'll take her for a ride next and see if that'll fix the problem, okay? Well, that didn't work. Still spits and sputters and coughs. So, distributor is out of the new engine. I have to have this truck running. Disturbers only 60 bucks with a cap rotor. I'll just go buy one off of Amazon, guys. It's all good. We'll put a new one in here. But I need to have this truck running right. Um, so, that's what we're going to do. My distributor that's in the truck right now, they didn't, I don't think I showed you. These are so loose. Maybe I did show you, yeah. And I'm also going to check the play. Um, uh, and I wonder if the the um, ignition setup right here, this four pin ignition setup, is toast too. It is pretty rough looking in the distributor that's in the truck. I mean, the whole distributor looks pretty bad. I wonder if it's old as hell. So, that's what we're going to do. Oops, sorry. So, I already, already redid the cap. I was going to leave that cap on there. And the engine runs fine with the cap. And cap new coil. Stuff like that. So we're just going to put this in there. Okay. Should be right back. Okay, guys. We may have found a problem. The bottom of the distributor has bad side-to-side -side shaft play. And, okay. See? Up and down play is a little okay. There's always a little bit of that. As you can tell in this new distributor. But side-to-side -side play is not what you want. You feel just ever so slightly tiny oh, bit there up is none down. On that one. Yeah, but there's no side to side play in this distributor. So this old distributor is so loose. And also the the spring, I mean the weight is shot. There's no tension on the weight. Um we think that it's just a toasted ah, distributor. I think it's just done. So they look the same. We don't really see any differences between A and B here. So we're just going to put that in. And always remember, where you took this out, you put it in exactly that way. If you don't do that, then bring the engine up to, onto top dead center number one. So remember where your piston is. Crank your engine until you first find out where your number one piston is. Crank your engine until you find it. And you pull the plug out, and then you, um, when you feel the puff of air, you stop, and you find your timing mark, and then you set it in there, and point it to the number one plug wire, and that'll do, that'll fix it. All right, so we're going to put this in. Right now he's, getting, he's taking the, the rotor off. Because we're going to use this rotor on the new, uh, back on, put it back on a billet distributor that we just took it off of. <laughs> because we found our problem. We're pretty sure that we have a toasty distributor. And there's, that's, see that right, right there. This one only ha has oh, no, yeah. no spring return in it. See how close those are together? Yeah. Well, loose those are. See? And then now look at those. Oh, they're not even, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. So that could cause premature detonation um, or oh, premature look advance. Look at that. They're saying, look how far out yeah, they're sitting. They're premature advance. There's nothing um, there. So, and with the distributor play on top of it, it's just time to change out the distributor. Like I said, I'll buy another one of these for this engine off of Amazon for 40, 50 bucks. Yeah, it's super cheap. That. Or rebuild that, whatever. Might do a rebuild video. Yeah. That might be cool. Put new bushing stuff in it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to drop this back in and um, we'll go, go back, get back to you there. Well, boys and girls, it doesn't run good. So I'm going to end this as part one. And we'll come back to it when we get to part two, okay?
Talk to you later. For Double Dungeon Garage, this is Mike and Dwight. Talk See you later. You. All right. Bye.